What is up everybody? My name is Dennis Cortez. I'm a designer who codes, teaches, and makes music. Today's video is going to be centered around tips for typography. So this is probably a little bit focused on product design, but it's still very applicable to all other design elements as well. So for context, I've been a designer for about 10 years almost, and I've been working at both startups and design agencies. I've worked on many apps, I've built many design systems, so I've worked a lot with typography, with color, with all the foundational design elements, and over time, I've kind of picked up a couple tips that I wanted to share with you all today. So let's go ahead and get started. So when I was getting started in product design, I had a boss at the time who was incredibly meticulous about doing things the right way, like everything down to pixel perfection. And at the time it was definitely super annoying to be honest, like I had to redo things multiple times just because I didn't do it right the first time. So with that, I really developed a keen eye for a lot of small details, which has been super helpful, not only for my own projects, but also when I'm working in a team setting, I can kind of help people kind of pick out small details and making sure that we're designing the best stuff that we can as a product. Also, just a quick plug, I'm also a music producer, so I make a lot of music that is really good to have on in the background, especially while you're working on product design stuff, for example. So I highly recommend you check it out if you're looking for new music. I know I always am. So my first tip is to create a system around the typography styles and spacing. So if you're assigning values to these and making sure that you have consistent spacing because you're setting up the text styles within Figma or Sketch, for example, this helps you be a lot more consistent and removes a lot of the guesswork from any of the designs that you're doing. It lets you really focus on the user experience and the design that you're trying to make without having to get distracted by what spacing am I supposed to use here? Is this correct? Is this consistent? Instead, you already have this system set up, so it makes it a lot easier to be able to do that. If you want some more details around this, I highly recommend you go ahead and check out my typography video. I'll go ahead and put it up in the info card, and it's also in the description as well if you wanna check it out. My second tip is to make sure that all of your letting is done correctly for legibility. So to be honest, a lot of the times the default styles really aren't the best. There tends to be either too much spacing or maybe too little for the specific product or design that you're working on. So letting is the vertical space that you have between the letters. And a lot of the times, if that's incorrect, it actually kind of hurts your readability of your design. My third tip is to create clear hierarchy with your typography using type sizes, weights, and colors. Clear hierarchy really improves the readability and usability of your designs, and it helps ease the navigation of your design. So there's actually a lot of combinations and many different ways to do this, but I'll say it just kind of depends on your design and your goals. So I would center them around how you want to pursue that. My fourth tip, which is pretty straightforward, at least in my mind, I think you should only use two different type styles when you're creating product. So I think if you go above that amount, it starts to get, you might start to see conflicting readability and usability in your testing. I think constraining yourself to two different typefaces instead of going over that makes it a lot easier for you to control that. And on that note, my fifth tip is to only use three different font weights for the types that you're using. Honestly, I actually typically prefer only two of those as well, but I think three can be okay in certain cases uh, for like uppercase letters uh, versus lowercase and having different weights for that. So I would assign those in conjunction with my tip number three around making the hierarchy. Tip number six is to use system fonts as much as possible. So when I say system fonts, I'm talking about for Apple, you have San Francisco, for Google, you have Roboto, and then for Microsoft, uh, you have Sego. I believe that's how you pronounce it, but you have that. So the reason that you want to use system fonts as often as you can, at least in my opinion, those typefaces have been made specifically for the operating systems that they're on, and they're maintained by the specific people that make those operating systems as well. So with that, you have a lot of improved accessibility. You have a lot of improved speed and rendering times. So I tend to use system fonts and go towards that as well. So you'll see I use on my website, I use one typeface for some of the headers, and then the rest of it is actually system. Also using system fonts, really helps the app that you're developing. It helps it kind of blend in with the rest of the operating system. So you have less differentiation in terms of patterns and styles that you're using for the app. Tip number seven is to give your type space to breathe. So a lot of junior designers I see that I work with, they typically kind of underestimate the amount of space that they have. So you wanna use your negative space appropriately like you would in foundational design for compositions. And an easy way to do this and kind of stay consistent with this is to use a grid. If you know me, you know I'm a huge proponent of using grids 
For me, I typically like using the eight point grid. You're allowed to use whatever grid you want, but if you're interested in the eight point grid and why I tend to use it, feel free to check out my video on eight point grid where I really do a deep dive on it and how to use it both in UI and different design systems as well. I'll leave that video in the info card and also in the description. All right, so last tip, tip number eight. It's not really a tip, but it's actually resources. So for me, there's a lot of different resources that I have used for typography. I'm a big typography nerd. I love learning different use cases, the ways that you can stylize it, et cetera, et cetera. So one of my biggest resources that I actually read back in college, it's called The Elements of Typographic Style, and it's by Robert Bringhurst. So this is a great book for foundational design. I actually recommend it whether you're a beginner or you're advanced. It has a lot of great foundational elements in there that have helped me even to this day. So I recommend you go ahead and read that. I'll also leave some resources from the web that I've found over the years um, from some of my favorite designers and some of my favorite companies. So I'll leave some resources down below as well. So be sure to check those out. So that's it for my tips. Just a heads up that I'm gonna be making a little mini series of these. So I'm not sure how many I'll do, but for now I have like typography, grids, accessibility, color, things like that. Just foundational things that I think can really help you all. These are tips that I've learned kind of on my own throughout the years that I've been working on design. And I think it can go a long way for people that are both beginner and advanced. So a reminder to join my Patreon as well if you want to get these videos early. I'm going to be posting that mini series. I'll be posting them up there first. So if you want to get those first and see behind the scenes and vote on new videos that are coming out, be sure to check it out. Link in the description as well, as usual. I also have a ton of other design videos on my channel. So if you're a designer and you're new here and you want to see some of the other videos that I've worked on, feel free to check it out on my channel. I have so many and I'm working on a ton more. So be expecting more in the future. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. And lastly, I'd love to hear any typography tips that you have that I may have missed. I love learning from other people as well as teaching other people. So if there's anything that I missed and you want to teach, help us out, leave it in the comments below. And so all of us can learn from it. So thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.